Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast recording of the Old Testament. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll be using for the text the Joseph Smith translation of the Old Testament, along with many commentaries from general authorities of the Church, BYU professors, Bible scholars, and others. This format will be very detailed, and so if you want a deep analysis of the Old Testament, you come to the right place. Thanks for your attendance. Hi, and welcome back to the Old Testament podcast. This is going to be for Leviticus chapter 10. So we've had the uh, consecration of Aaron and his sons. Uh, we've also had uh, lots of sacrifices being done. We're going to have a little bit of a problem here with Aaron's sons, and we'll see how that turns out. All right, verse 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. The Hebrew word translated as strange means to be alien, as opposed to that which is holy and legitimate. Thus, the idea is not that the fire was strange or unusual, but that these two sons of Aaron engaged in an unauthorized form of worship, whether they took fire, actually hot coals from another source than the great altar which God himself had kindled, or whether they used an incense not prepared as specified is not clear from the from the account. But after revealing the proper preparation of the incense, the Lord warned, Whosoever shall make like unto that to smell thereto shall even be cut off from his people. Aaron's other sons were forbidden to officially mourn the death of their brothers. From this action would imply that the Lord had been unjust in the punishment. Uh, that was out of the Institute Manual. Verse 2, And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. And Moses called Mishael and el the sons of Uzeel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar, his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which the Lord hath kindled. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you, and they did according as to the word of Moses." It now only remains to describe the two illustrative instances already referred to, the one connected with the priesthood, the other with the people. Aaron and his sons had just been solemnly consecrated to their holy office in the offering which they had brought, consumed in view of the whole people by fire from from before Jehovah, to betoken his acceptance thereof. All the more did any transgression of the Lord's ordinance, especially if committed by his priests, call for signal and public punishment. But Nadab and Abihu, the two eldest sons of Aaron, attempted to offer strange fire before Jehovah, which he commanded them not. Some writers have inferred from the prohibition of wine or of any strong drink to the priests during the time of their ministry, which immediately uh, follows upon the record of this event, that these two had been under some such influence at the time of their daring attempt. The point is of small importance, comparatively speaking. It is not easy to say what the expression strange fire exactly implies. Clearly, the two were going to offer incense on the golden altar, and as clearly this service was about to be done at a time not prescribed by the Lord. For a comparison of verses 12 and 16 shows that it took place between the sacrifice offered by Aaron and the festive meal followed that sacrifice, whereas incense was only to be burnt at the morning and the evening sacrifices. Besides, it may be that they also took strange fire in the sense of taking the burning coals otherwise than from the altar of burnt offerings. In the ceremonial for the Day of Atonement, the latter is expressly prescribed, and it is a fair inference that the same direction applied to every time of incensing. At any rate, we know that such was the invariable rule in the temple at the time of Christ, but Nadab and Abihu were not allowed to accomplish their purpose. The first, or the same fire which a little ago had consumed the accepted sacrifice now struck them, and they died before Jehovah, that is, in front of his dwelling place, most probably in the court, just as they were about to enter the holy place. 
Thus, on the very day of their consecration to the priesthood, did the oldest sons of Aaron perish, because they had not sanctified the Lord in their hearts, but had offered him a worship of their own devising, instead of that holy incense consumed by, by fire from off the altar, which symbolized prayer, offering up on the ground of accepted sacrifice. And this twofold lesson did the Lord himself teach in explanation of this judgment. So far as the priesthood was concerned, I will sanctify myself in those who stand near me, or near to me. And so far as the people were concerned, before all the people I will glorify myself. In other words, if those who had been consecrated to him would not sanctify him in heart and life, he would sanctify himself in them by judgments, and thus glorify his name before all as the Holy One who cannot with impunity be provoked to anger. To deeply, So deeply was Aaron solemnized, that in the language of Scripture he held his peace. Not a word of complaint escaped his lips, nor yet was a token of mourning on his part or on that of his sons allowed to cast the shadow of personal feelings or of latent regret upon his signal vindication of, di of divine holiness. Only their brethren, the whole house of Israel, were permitted to bewail this burning of his anger which Jehovah hath kindled. And that was by Alfred Edersheim. That helps us get a better understanding for what's going on here, doesn't it? Verse 8, And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine nor strong drink, or intoxicating drink, the Hebrew, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean, the Hebrew, to distinguish between the holy and the profane, and between the impure and the pure. And that ye may teach the children of Israel, all the statutes which the Lord hath spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. And Moses spake unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar, his sons that were left, Take the meat offering that remaineth of the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and eat it without leaven, or eat it with unleavened bread, beside the altar, for it is most holy. And ye shall eat it in the holy place, but because it is thy due, and thy sons due, of the sacrifices of the Lord made by fire, for so I am commanded. And the wave breast and heave shoulder shall ye eat in a clean place, thou and thy sons, and thy daughters with thee, for they be thy due, and thy sons due, which are given out of the sacrifices of peace offerings of the children of Israel. The heave shoulder and the wave breast, or the Hebrew, the shoulder of a, for a contribution, and the breast for a present, shall they bring with the offering made by fire of the fat to wave it for a wave offering before the Lord. And it shall be thine and thy sons with thee by a statute forever, the Hebrew for a perpetual law, as the Lord hath commanded. And Moses diligently sought the goat, demanded the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it was burnt. And he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, which were left alive, saying, Wherefore have ye not eaten the sin offering in the holy place, seeing it is most holy, and God hath given it you to bear the iniquity of the congregation to make atonement for them before the Lord? Behold, the blood of it was not the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place. Ye should indeed have eaten it in the holy place as I commanded. And Aaron said unto Moses, Behold, this day have they offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord, and such things have befallen me. And if, and if I have eaten the sin offering today, should it have been accepted in the sight of the Lord? Part of the sin offering was specified for the use of the priest who administered the offering, thus bearing the iniquity of the congregation. However, Eleazar and Ithamar had burnt all of it rather than eating their portion. <clears throat> this was the second time the sons of Aaron had not followed the law. Moses rebuked them, but Aaron re withstood the rebuke. The excuse with which Aaron makes for not feasting on the sin offering according to the law is at once appropriate and dignified as if he had said, God certainly has commanded me to eat of the sin offering, but when such things as these have happened to me, could it be good in the sight of the Lord? Does he not expect that I should feel as a father under such inflicting or such afflicting circumstances? With this spirited answer, Moses was satisfied, and God, who knew the, knew his situation, took no notice of the irregularity which had taken place in the solemn service. To human nature, God has given the privilege to weep in times of affliction and distress. In his infinite kindness, he has ordained that tears, which are only a external evidences of our grief shall be the outlets of our sorrows and tend to exhaust the cause from which they flow. And then verse 20, and when Moses heard that, he was content. So that's the end of uh, that chapter, and I hope you'll come back for the next one, chapter 11. See you next time. Bye.